Call all hands. Speak to quarters. Run out the gun. Stand by this tavern battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's Indomitable Man of the Sea, Horatio Hornblower. set eyes many times on the North African city of Oran. But that morning was the first time when the eyes of youth are so struck by beauty that I could not help but stop and gape. Our squadron had arrived in the Gulf of Oran the evening before. And now, as I climbed the quarter deck to report to Captain Pellew, the scene spread before me. The water was the bluest I'd ever seen. The sky also. And where water and sky met lay the heathen city of Oran, its minarets and towers lovely beyond description. Well, Mr. Hobbler, eager to get ashore? Sir? The squadron's in need of supplies. Mr. Tapley here, as you know, is a civilian, member of the diplomatic corps, assigned duty with the fleet. Yes, sir. He's arranged with the Bay of Oran to purchase cattle and grain. You will be in charge of the longboat that takes him ashore, Mr. Hobbler. Aye, uh, sir. Tapley, you make every effort, you understand? I do. Very well, Captain. We're blockading all of Europe. Nothing but enemies on the entire continent. Unless we manage supplies here, we'll be forced to lift the blockade and sail clear back to England. Well, there's always Gibraltar, sir. What good's Gibraltar? Now that Spain's joined France against us, Gibraltar, too, is hard put for supplies. We must have these. Oh, I'll do my best, Captain. But as you know, the Muslims are very tricky fellows. You've 7,000 gold guineas. Don't pay over tuppence of it until the cattle and grain are already loaded in the lighters. By then you can... Mr. Hobdar. Sir, has your attention been wandering? Oh, no, no. Sorry, sir. It was the uh, sight of Oran, sir. There was... Those white buildings over there. It looks... It looks so... So clean. Clean? Oh, wait till you lay alongside the dock, Mr. Hornblower. Clean, eh? <laughs> All right, boat oars. Boat oars! You're in the bow there, Hunter. Stand by to secure onto that firing. Aye, aye. Mr. Tapling, that man over there standing on the dock, he, is he waiting for us, do you think? Big black man in a blue robe. Yes. Yes, that's him, Dura, representative of his master, the ruler of Iran. He's very, very picturesque. Picturesque, Hornblower. Oh, yes, everything but this place, it looks... Oh. What's wrong, Hornblower? You stopped in mid-flight. Wow. Oh, smell. Oh, the breeze shifted suddenly, and I got a whiff of... Oh, Mr. Tapling, it smells, smells unclean, like a... Oh, like a pest hole. Mr. Dura, allow me to present Mr. Hornblower of His Britannic Majesty's Navy. Yes, yes, you have brought with you the gold? In the boat, right below us. Good, good, I will take the gold and bring you the supplies. Oh, uh, no, thank you. First the supplies, then the gold. Oh, he's nonsense, <laughs> You do not trust the Bay of Oran? Uh, I appeal to you, Mr. Hornaday. Hornblower, 
I'm sorry, Mr. Durar, but I must agree with Mr. Tapling. Those lighters beside the dock, they're there for supplies? Yes, for the cattle and the grain. For 400 fat cattle, Durar, and 1,500 for negers of barley grain. It is all ready. This is not all yet here, Mr. Durar. Once it's here, on board the lighters for transport to our supply ship, the Caroline, that... Well, I agree with Mr. Tapling. But... Oh. oh, something troubles you, Durar? Oh, forgive me, Effendi. I am not well... This heat. Or perhaps it's worry about what the bay will do to you if we take the gold and depart. Oh, never. Never. Uh, please to wait. I, I will return with the supplies long before nightfall. Please wait. Look at that, Hornblower. Yes, I saw it. Oh, big one. All rats are big, you know, Ren. But did you notice how it's tumbled entering that drain pipe as if it were drunk? to spread an awning against the rays of the sun. And we sat under it, all of us. Dappling, our crew from the longboat, and I. Out beyond the harbor, the indefatigable stood under furled sail, with the Caroline beside her. The ocean looked cool and pleasant, but we drew small comfort from it. Natives in long robes came and went, and one of them seemed almost as badly off as the rat. Hey, Tapling. Yes, look. Huh? Isn't, isn't that Dura coming back? Oh, let me see. Yes, it is. With a string of loaded donkeys and a herd of cattle. And men carrying grain sacks. Mm, scrawny cattle. Well, we're lucky to get even these. All right, Mr. Dura. Load them on the lighters and we'll hand over the gold. Lively now. The way they drive those men. Look, there's three of them fainted already, Tapley. So long as they finish the loading, Hornblower. Look, they just lie there, and they all act as if they were drunk. It's, you know, it's pretty curious. It's the sun. Ah, here's Dura now. Capital, Mr. Dura. Everything's just about on board. Oh, uh, Hornblower, if you have that gold handed up. Hey, wait a minute. What? Mr. Dura. Dura, what is it? What's the matter? I am most... Il oh, Lord, oh, 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 yes, sir, that he is. He's swaying oh, like a stiff close waist to the waist. I, I saw it. I, I feel burning up. Oh, the sun. Oh, no. No, my head. My... Oh, oh, oh. I certainly wasn't drunk. No, no, neither were the others, nor that first Muslim who keeled over, nor was it the sun. By heavens! And that rat hornblower, that rat that had difficulty in finding the drain pipe. Yes, do you think it, it's, it's... It's the plague, the Black Death. I saw it in Smyrna in 94. <laughs> Specials of the next dock. They're casting off, sir, rowing out to sea. The whole town is in a panic. Look at them running everywhere. Uh, there's no sense in leaving the gold sitting here on dockside. Matthews, Hunter, pass it back on board the longboat. But, sir, I confound you, that is an order. Aye, aye, sir. Now, Mr. Tapling, what do we do now? Do all blur? We stay here and rot. Stay here. <laughs> Yes, I understand that, sir. 
The Caroline will keep completely clear of the squadron, completely. Have I your permission, sir? Permission granted, Mr. Hornblower. You're placed in command of the Caroline. I'll have her crew taken out before you return with the lighters. Carry on. Aye, aye, sir. Hear that, Tapling? I can't help wondering what. It's pounds to sixpence. We've already picked up the plague. We're as good as dead already, Hornblower. ship and loading into it all that vast amount of cattle and grain. Nor shall I ever forget my desolation the next morning when the squadron left us behind. What's that? Signal gun from the indefatigable Tapling. Oh, saying farewell, eh? Yes. Two guns. I'm getting a salute as an acting lieutenant. I hope I can prove worthy of it now. Until late that afternoon, we'll be prepared to set sail and leave the Gulf of Oran. And before we did, one of the Moorish craft called Zebex came rowing out from the harbor. Strange gibberish was called at us. What are they saying, Captain? Can you make it out? Oh, something about their money, I think. Their money? Oh, the 7,000 guineas. <laughs> well, at least they're not frightened enough of the plague to forget that, are they? Well, they're frightened enough to stay well clear. Well, the money's theirs. There's no doubt of that. Well, how will we get it to them unless we close in? Well, um, tell them tell them we'll seal it up in a couple of rum punctions and float it down to them. I'm just as anxious to stay clear of them as they are of us. Matthews? Sir? See to it at once. Oh, and, and, and Matthews, have the crew stand by to hoist sail. We have a long three weeks ahead of us. There was little sleep aboard the Caroline. With but 20 men to handle her, we had our hands full. There were other problems as well. Uh, sir, this Noah's Ark smells worse than all Rand does. Uh, we'll have to do something about them cattle, sir. The men will have to do double duty, Matthews. I want every man to stand the second watch. And it will be employed in mucking out. Yeah. Mucking out? Cleaning sir. the cattle stalls, Matthews. Haven't you ever been a farmer? Uh. Cleaning out the stalls. <laughs> sir, begging your pardon. Well, what is it, Hunter? Now, don't tell me the men are complaining of their rations. We're giving every one of you fresh meat. We slaughtered a bullock a day. Oh, no, sir, it ain't that. That fresh meat is welcome. Why, well, there ain't hardly one of us ever tasted a steak before. Uh, no, sir, it's this brig. She's leaking very bad, sir. She's leaking very bad. Well, we'll man the pumps. Pumps night and day. <laughs> sir, what is it now, Matthews? No sign of plague, is there? Uh, no, sir. Praise be for that. We're well, 15 days out of Oran already. No sign of plague yet. We, we may escape it entirely. Uh, there's something else we can't escape, sir. We've run out of water. What's that? Aye, sir. Clean out. Yes, but there was plenty. Captain Pellew had the Caroline well stocked before the squadron left us. He forgot about them cattle, sir. They drinks water, too. Oh. Gallons of it. The quarantine period is three weeks, Matthews. We've got to hang on out here for another six days, somehow. Yeah. Can't be done, sir. Not without fresh water. Sir, they sighted a sail around the far point. What? They think it's a Spanish coastal guard lugger. Coast guard, eh? Matthews. Sir? How many hands do you think that lugger carries? How many, sir? Yeah. Well, uh, I should judge 25. Yes, so should I. Well, at the outside, 30. And we have 20. Uh, sir, you ain't thinking of... I am. Um... I am. Listen. She carries four eight-pounders. So long as she doesn't stand off and use them, we may have a chance. Hunter! Aye, sir. I want you to choose two men and show yourselves up here at the helm with me. Aye, aye, sir. I want everybody else to stay out of sight behind the railing. Hand out pistols and cutlasses to all hands, Matthews. Aye, sir. Mr. Tapling may also serve, so see that he's armed. I want every man ready to jump. And if a man shows himself before I give the order, you'll shoot him, Matthews, with your own hand. 
Aye, aye, sir. Now, we're showing no colors. Our plan's legal under the laws of war. We'll wait till the lugger comes alongside the men. Border. Suppose they stand off, sir. Oh, let's hope they don't, Matthews. Their job is to apprehend smugglers. Let them take us for smugglers and we have a chance. A good chance. I remember even now how excited I was, how my knees trembled and to what pains I went to conceal it. And I remember being grateful for those cattle. All that voyage they grated on my nerves with their mournful bellowing. But now I welcomed it. For who would expect a ship laden with cattle to be prepared to fight? There's a warning shot, sir. Yes, so far back. I'm going to heave too, Hunter. You men, main tops or braces? Helm hardily, Hunter. Hardily, it is, sir. Yeah. They don't suspect nothing, sir. They're laughing about the cattle, I expect. Yeah. Wait, man. Wait. Officer on board is about to hail us, sir. Ahoy! Hey, yes, that's it, Make first day. Stand by. We come alongside. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ahead. Come right to the wrong side. You'll stay at the helm, Hunter. Bye, sir. They're close. Yes. Uh, beg pardon, sir. I said, are you going to board her? What? Well, certainly. You forgot to arm yourself, sir. You forgot a pistol or even a cutlass. Like I was alongside. I had no time to remedy my lack of weapons. I'm certain that my voice cracked when I gave the command for my crew to follow me. I ran across the deck and with a gulp flung myself down upon the Spaniard's deck. The men came pouring down. Hey! 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 Since we set out, quarantine period will soon be over. Can't we head for Gibraltar with safety? Yes. I'm certain of it, Mr. Tatling. second day of our quarantine, we entered Gibraltar Bay with a captured Spanish lugger under our lee. I was a proud young fellow, acting Lieutenant Hornblower safely in with supplies for the fleet and a prize to boot. But if I expected praise, I got little of it. I reported to Captain Ballou. He nodded and dismissed me. And the only comment I received came from the chief commissary of the squadron when I presented to him my accounting of the supplies. Mr. Hornblower, do you mean to tell me that you allowed your crew to eat fresh beef, a bullock a day for your men? That was wanton extravagance, Mr. Hornblower. I'm surprised at you. Yes, sir. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. 
Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.